Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Chappie's Tiki Bar. This is the Texas episode. We're going to make some Texas red hot chili. And have some barbecue Texas beef brisket. Mookie's going to be along with best tropical destination stories. And we have Appies with Chappie by the Lake. Coming right up. Aloha and welcome to Chappie's Tiki Bar. This is the Texas episode. We got a great episode coming up. We're going to do some Texas red hot chili. I'm going to smoke a Texas beef brisket. And then Appies with Chappie, we're going to do uh, Texas style jalapeno grilled poppers. Uh, so I'm going to start things off by making a pink margarita. I'll put a little ice in my cocktail shaker. I got some Jose Cuervo tequila to make it pink. Um, I have a pink Whitney vodka lemonade. Pink vodka lemonade. That'll make it pink. Now Jose Cuervo actually makes a pink uh, margarita mix. But I have some... Pink Whitney left over from my Pink Whitney episode, so I might as well use that up. An ounce of fresh lime juice, a little bit of lime cordial, some sweet and sour mix, and I usually use triple sec, but uh, I have Grand Marnier today as a substitute because it's fancy. And we'll give that a shake. And that's my pink margarita. Um, I'm going to have this with my uh, grilled jalapeno poppers. So stay tuned for Appies with Chappie by the Lake and we'll do some grilled Texas style jalapeno poppers. Appies with Chappie by the Lake. All right, so I'm going to do my Texas style grilled jalapeno poppers. Um, or if you're from Newfoundland, jalapeno. Uh, so I, I'm just going to cut the top off of this giant jalapeno and then I have a gadget here. We'll see how uh, this works. I'm going to get all the uh, membrane and seeds out of the center. That's where all the heat is. Okay, all the seeds are coming out on the counter <laughs> and onto the floor. All right, so I have my hollowed out jalapeno and I have a nice uh, stick of white cheddar cheese. Just going to put inside and I'm going to put the lid back on top. I might put a toothpick just to hold it in place and we'll get these on the grill for my Texas style grilled jalapeno poppers. <music> going to smoke a giant brisket um, I have some apple wood I'm gonna put it on my Bradley smoker and then I also have some stew meat I'm gonna make some uh, Texas red hot chili uh, so we'll take a look at my cuts of meat here uh, I just have the uh, stew meat I got a giant package of stew meat from Costco um, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of carne asada seasoning um, now with the stew meat, I'm just going to smoke it for an hour and then I'm going to take it inside, uh, sort of sear or brown the meat and then I'm going to throw it in the slow cooker for another six hours. Um, and then I'll make a chili paste uh, with my homemade uh, chicken stock. Texas red hot chili, I'm not going to put any beans in it. I'm going to try to make it a little bit authentic. Uh, so Wikipedia says... Uh, Chili became commonly prepared in northern Mexico and southern Texas. Uh, unlike some of the other Texas foods, such as barbecued brisket, uh, chili largely originated from the working class Tejana and Mexican women. The chili queens of San Antonio, Texas, were particularly famous in previous decades for selling their inexpensive chili-flavored beef stew in their casual chili joints. Uh, the San Antonio Chili Stand, in operation at the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago helped popularize chili by giving many Americans their first taste of it. San Antonio was a tourist destination and helped Texas style chili con carne spread through the South and the West. Chili con carne is the official dish of the U.S. state of Texas as designated by the House of Concurrent Resolution number 18 of the 65th 
Texas legislation during its regular session in 1977. So we're going to do some real Texas chili and, and there's my brisket I'm going to barbecue. So I'm going to have the fat cap side up so it moisturizes the meat. I have some actual beef rub. Uh, this is actually from Texas, Stubbs Barbecue. Uh, I've been to Stubbs Barbecue in Austin, Texas. Awesome. Um, so with this brisket, I'm going to uh, put the rub on and we're going to have it in the smoker for at least 12 hours. With Texas Barbecue, beef is king, uh, but it's no great secret or mystery. Uh, there's just a lot of cows in Texas, so that's why uh, Texas barbecue is synonymous with beef. So with that rub, it's called a rub, but I'm just going to gently sprinkle it on. Um, I don't want it to permeate the meat because I want the smoke to permeate the meat because uh, I'm going to go through a lot of trouble to smoke it for um, 12 hours. So I want that smoke to get in there. Um, so I'll uh, get started on the smoking. And then after an hour, I'm going to take the uh, stew meat out and we'll get working on my Texas red hot chili. Alright, so my stew meat's been in the smoker for an hour and then I seared it off in my cast iron skillet with a little olive oil, I added some salt and pepper, I already had the carne asada seasoning on it before it went into the smoker. Uh, so more about this in a minute. This is for my red hot Texas chili. I just want to show you my brisket. So this bad boy, it's been in there for an hour, it's got another 11 hours to go. I just wanted to show you so when I went to the butcher I had him leave the fat cap on so the fat's gonna render down into the meat and make it nice and juicy uh, now why brisket you ask well as I said like Texas is uh, has a lot of cows so barbecue is synonymous with beef uh, but for the brisket the uh, Jewish immigrants when they came to Texas they brought the brisket uh, it's supposed to be an inexpensive cut of meat now it's a little different in Canada I think in the States it's it's very economical so this was I said it was uh, 10 uh, kgs uh, which is 22 pounds so this is a 22 pound brisket it cost me uh, 70 dollars so I, th I think if you're in the US it would be a lot less so we're going to smoke that for another 11 hours. I'll hopefully get a nice pink smoke ring on it. Uh, now back to my Texas style chili. Uh, so I have the stew meat. So I just have a slow cooker here. Uh, stew meat's going to go in. And again, I seared that off just to get nice brown caramelization on it. On the barbecue, I toasted off some Guajillo and Ancho chilies. Um, make sure you don't burn them. You just burn them you just as soon as you can smell them you know uh, it's just starting to release the oils so this is an ancho chili and this is a wahio chili and those are synonymous with Mexican cooking which is the origin of chili moving up into Texas and then um, if you noticed on my game day episode I made Coney Island chili so what I'm, I'm gonna do with this I'm gonna do the exact same thing I'm gonna make a paste some uh, chilies in this container I have some boiling water just gonna put a lid on that to uh, keep the floaters down I'm gonna let that steep for an hour then I'm gonna remove the seeds and stems I'm gonna throw out the liquid the liquids no good um, so I'm gonna puree it but what I'll puree it with is my homemade chicken stock so I made homemade chicken stock. So I'm going to puree that with the Wahio and ancho chilies. And that's going to go into my Texas red hot chili as opposed to just chili powder because I find the chili powder can be a little grainy. And also with my um, game day episode Coney Island Detroit style chili, my secret ingredient was sloppy joe mix. So I'm going to do a can of sloppy joe. Um, I didn't use beer in my Coney Island chili, but I'm going to put two cans of beer in the slow cooker. And then I'm going to do a cup of hot sauce. Uh, you can put it however much hot sauce you want, to, depending on how hot you like it. And then with the cumin, um, I have toasted cumin seeds. So it's the same uh, 
same philosophy as with the uh, dry chili pe peppers. I just toasted them so you can smell them. Don't burn them. Now, these are just uh, cumin seeds. So I'm going to put them in a mortar and pestle. The toasted cumin seeds are in the mortar and pestle. I'm just going to make that into a powder. You just buy the cumin powder, but they could be selling you uh, sand for all you know. So you can really smell it that I because I toasted it off, I released the oils, and now I'm just going to pulverize it. So that's uh, the cumin. Cumin's going to go in. Let the uh, chilies uh, steep for an hour. I'm going to puree them into a paste, and then I'm going to slow cook that stew meat for a good six hours. And then we're going to have some Texas red hot chili. I'm going to get this uh, giant 22 pound brisket back in the smoker for another 11 hours and I'll see you at supper time. All right, I got a nice big old bowl of Texas Red Hot. Give it a try. Again, that's a uh, nice tender stew meat. Whoa. I just want to show you how tender this meat is. It's nice and flaming hot. Oh, Mookie's come to investigate. It's too spicy for you, darling. No Texas red hot for you. So again, just check out Just fork tender. Howdy, partners. Uh, we call this segment Best Tropical Destination Stories. Uh, you're in luck this week. Um, it's the Texas show, so we have a Texas themed tropical destination story. Uh, now, if you want to send your best tropical destination stories to me, send them to Chappiness Tiki Bar at yahoo.com and I'll read them on my show. Now, we're in luck because uh, we have a submission from a reoccurring character. Uh, he goes by the anonymous handle of RJ. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and read RJ's Texas story. Now, Mookie's here to summon the tiki drums uh, so we can commence the best tropical destination story from Texas. Uh, so, have at her, Mookie. Thank you, Mookie. So, we'll get right into it. Um, this is called Texas Nights from RJ. Uh, so, it says, me and my buddy, who for purposes of this story will herein be referred to as Buddy, uh, found ourselves with a free night in San Antonio. So, after hitting a steakhouse chain on the river walk and ordering chicken we did one of the most texan things possible we went to a hockey game but it was two dollar beer night at the at&t center as the san antonio rampage took on the avalanche affiliate not a bad game a little sketchy on the details due to the fact that there was no limit on how many two dollar beers we could purchase our Uber driver, who we were lucky to catch as my phone died, suggested we go back to the Riverwalk and hit a well-known Irish establishment called Dirty Nellie's. Nellie's is a fun bar, not really karaoke, but the band plays songs that everyone can sing to. Getting there late, we were standing near the back when a pair of 40-something blondes saw me and Buddy and suggested we join them at their table down front. The gals were friendly, down from Dallas for the weekend to celebrate one of their divorces coming final. 
Always good to join those celebrations when in a strange town. Anyway, after last call, we walked the ladies back to their hotel. Although we took the long way back to see some of the sights, once we got the girls dropped off at their hotel, a quick nightcap, we headed back to our hotel as it was about 4 a.m. and we had a big day of football and tailgating planned for Austin later that day. Once in Austin, heading for the football stadium, Buddy was checking his phone and started laughing hard. What's so funny, I asked. Well, Buddy had given one of the girls his card and she sent him a Facebook request. On her page, she had posted pictures from the night before. And lo and behold, there I am in front of the Alamo with, with the other friend. Uh, in a tender embrace and with our tongues down each other's throats. While I'm sure I thought I knew what I was doing in the soft moon of the warm Texas night, I was not sure how impressed I was seeing it come back to haunt me, nursing a hangover in the hot Texas sun. Buddy tried to cheer me up by pointing out that was the exact spot that Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie fought to their deaths defending the Six Flags of Texas. So 180 years later, I could use it as a backdrop and an excuse to convince a middle-aged divorced blonde to make out with me. Well, there's one thing I know for sure, I will always remember the Alamo. All right, thank you for that story, RJ. And that concludes Best Tropical Destination Stories from Texas. Uh, so again, send all your tropical destination stories or any kind of holiday story to Chappiness Tiki Bar at yahoo.com and I'll read them on my show. All right, all right, all right. I got my Texas beef brisket. I got some real authentic Texas barbecue sauce, Stubbs, from Austin, Texas. So here it is. Um, this is the best part. It's called burnt ends. So it's just the nub on the end of the brisket. It. It's got like lots of smoky bark. My mouth is just watering. So I'm gonna do a little bit of stubs on the side. And then I'm gonna give one of my burnt ends a try. A little bit with the sauce. Oh, that is fantastic. I would say this is almost as good as um, the barbecue I had in Texas. Good job. Good job, Chappie. All right. Mookie, you want a little piece? You want a burnt end? Come on, darling. Have a burnt end. Oh, she just snatched it. The other day she snatched a whole chicken breast from me. All right, so there's my Texas-style beef brisket. Can't get enough of these uh, burnt ends. I, I wish I could just make a whole tray of burnt ends. Oh, unbelievable. Thanks for watching another edition of Chappie's Tiki Bar. Uh, please give me a like and subscribe below. This is Mookie and I'm Chappie. And we're saying life is hard. That's just the way it goes. But sometimes it goes the other way. See you next time on Chappie's Tiki Bar.